Good morning. Oh, come on. That was weak. Good morning. <clears throat> all right. Let's all come on in and get, 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 get seated. I, I, there's a few back there. We've got a lot of folks out this morning, uh, uh, some sick, uh, some battling. But I want to talk to you real quick uh, as pastor and dad. Come on, guys in the back. Good girl. Let's bow our heads first and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for uh, this opportunity to come into your presence and have an encounter with you today. Uh, we can come together as a body and enjoy fellowship, but unite and worship you and praise you and honor you. Father, we ask that the Holy Spirit have his way in this place this morning, that he would fill this place with his glory and that he would lead us into the will of the Father, that you would have your way in this place today, Father. As we bring forth our praise and our worship and uh, our songs, we have a list, but have your way. Do what you want to do, Father. We have words to preach, but, Father, have your way. Do what you desire to do in this place today. We love you. We praise you and give you all honor and all glory. And all God's people said, amen, amen. Bill, can you turn this row of lights on? Um, for those of you that know, uh, last week, uh, Brendan, my son had started a manic attack, and um, we asked for prayer. And then it proceeded on through the week, and uh, a lot of stuff was said on Facebook and social media, and and there was things said by Brendan to some of you personally and text-wise. And um, as I was talking to Ashley, you know, these are things that are deep-seated in his heart for wounds and stuff like that, but it's it's like all of us have these things about that are in us that we don't say, but we feel them, and we manage them to because we try to be good and be nice and, and all of those things. Uh, with this disorder, that filter goes away, and you spew out the garbage that you shouldn't. And he's embarrassed by it. Uh, he's sorry. But he also, it's in his hands to do something about it um, and make a change and change his lifestyle and take his medicine. But as your pastor and as the leader of this church, I want to apologize that my family stuff affected this body. So I apologize for that, and we are doing our best to manage that. I also want to thank all of you who have prayed, who have stood by us, who have helped uh, in any way that you can. We love you, and thank you for helping him and reaching out to him and, and listening to his garbage and still loving him, and I appreciate it. Uh, I, I love you guys very much, and I pray that those that are out today are not because of him. And if anybody has any issues or, or has been affected and you need to talk, please come see me after service, okay? Secondly, uh, uh, moving on from that, I am doing some work in the room one back there uh, this afternoon. If anybody uh, has some free time and wants to help me, I'd love uh, or appreciate the help. Um, what, what else do we need to talk about, honey? Lay, out, lay aside every weight. Please go online, register. When does it start? The 20th. February 20th? Oh. Okay. All right. Gotcha. All right. And when is, uh, uh, never mind. When we finish that room in there, we're going to start classes again. Um, anything else to announce? You all got anything to announce? Push your team. Youth. Women's Fellowship on the 31st of February, January, December. Of January? 
Okay. Um, I'm going after my win. Yeah, exactly. Uh, lastly, that's it on announcements. That's all. We got a bulletin. All right. Um, lastly, if you don't know, um, Fred and Vivian uh, were elders in, the, in our church, and they moved to Colorado to retire and be near their kids. Um, Fred has been battling CPOD and cancer and kidney problems and all that. Well, he has decided not to do dialysis anymore, and he's on hospice right now. And um, Vivian is expecting him to go home to be with the Lord sometime between now and next week sometime. Um, we're going to go up there and, and, and help with the funeral. Um, but I was I, I just want to take a moment to let's just pray for them and she is just if you want to see somebody how to walk the walk of faith, just follow Vivian. That woman is a mighty, mighty, mighty warrior. She's a mighty woman of faith. And everybody sees Vivian because she's the one out front. But Fred is the backbone of that family, the strength and the wisdom that the motor to the engine. She may have been the she may have been the vehicle, but he was the motor. And um, I have a special place in my heart, not just because of their contribution to the church, but when nobody else, nobody in my family who had the means put a faith into us to, to finance this building. They took their um, retirement and, and took a chance, and that was, you know, that, that was it. If it was gone, that was it. There was no other means of making money, and I, I will never, never forget that and will always be in debt to them for, for taking that chance and believing on us. Um, they're very special. So uh, if you would this week, just take time to pray for them and lift them up, okay? And if you can, send them a note and let them know you love them, okay? Let's bow our heads. Let's all stand. Let's get ready to worship the King. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning, and we just ask for your forgiveness in the places that we failed you this week. Father God, we just lift up uh, 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 Fred this morning, and, and, and we just ask for your healing touch to flow through him, Father God. And, and, and Father... He hasn't said, she hasn't said it to me, he hasn't said it to me, but I just feel like he has said, I'm ready to come home. And, and he, he's preparing the way. So we're not asking for a miracle today, Father. We're asking, Father, for you to allow him to finish this race, Father God, with his eyes upon you. And Father God, I as you did for Stephen, you stood up. Father, I just know that your heart loves that man so much. And you're waiting, welcoming him in. The arms open wide. And I know you're going to speak to him. Good job. Well done. Father, just bless him. Take all pain away. Take all uh, fear away. Allow everything that needs to be said, spoken. Allow everything that needs to be done, done. Father God, and we just ask that as the angels come, that he go out glorious, Father God. And we thank you for it. We praise you for it. We, we just ask for a special blessing today, Father. In Jesus' name and all God's people said, amen and amen. Let's go shake, uh, 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 hug and shake people's necks and do something. But love on people. Tell them you're glad that you're glad they're here today. All right? Interpreting that. That means hug and hug people's necks, shake their hands.
sun is burning in my spirit. I'm gonna dance with all my might. I don't care who sees it. I'm gonna let it wild. Be just like a child and say, I love you, Lord. I might, I might make a scene tonight. I might come unwrapped. Calling out too deep, oh my heart can't feel it. I've gotta let it wild, be just like a child and say, I love you, Lord. Praise is like, praise is like the raging flood pouring from my spirit. The deep is calling. Yeah. 
victory, my victory. Your spirit lives within me, so I will walk in your peace. Your spirit lives within me, my victory, my victory. Your spirit lives within me, so I will walk in your I thought you'd be You're not hard to please But full of patience You're not Who I thought you were You're not cold or stern But full of kindness You have always Always Always
Take what's old and make it new. Now see how burning me. Let me see what eyes haven't seen and ears haven't heard. I'm ready, Lord, and now sing. Come, burning me. Let me see what eyes haven't seen. Ears haven't heard, I'm ready, Lord. You are. And you are a consuming fire. And how could I not get burned by you? Branded with your desire. You take what's old and make it new. Now sing, come, burn in me. Let me see what eyes haven't seen and ears haven't heard. I'm ready, Lord, and now sing, come, burn in me. Let me see what eyes haven't seen. Years haven't heard, I'm ready, Lord. You are vibrant. You are a vibrant light. How could I take my eyes off you? Surrender. Heart of could my feet not run to you? Cause when I saw you coming, I came running to crash right into you. Then you wrapped me in flames and now I know it's true. So come, oh, burn in me and let me see what eyes haven't seen. I'm ready, Lord, and I'll see come. Oh, burn in me, let me see what eyes haven't seen and ears haven't heard. I'm ready, do it again, and I'll see come. Oh, burn in me, let me see what eyes haven't seen and ears haven't heard. I'm ready, Lord, and I'll sing. Come, oh, burn in me. Let me see what eyes haven't seen and ears haven't heard. I'm ready, Lord. Because it's a fire, and it's a fire, and it's burning hotter, and I'm standing on the old.
ears haven't heard, I'm ready, Lord. I'll sing, come. Burning me, let me see. Eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard. I'm ready, Lord, then I'll sing, come. Burning me, let me see. Eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard. I'm ready, do it again. And I'll sing, come, burn in me, let me see, my eyes haven't seen, and ears haven't heard, I'm come on, do it again, and I'll sing, come, oh, burn in me, let me see, my eyes haven't seen, and ears haven't heard, I'm ready, Lord.
altars where you meet us. Take me there, take me there. If you're looking for an offering, it's right here. My life is here. I'll be a living sacrifice for you. A fire, refiner. I want to be consumed. I want to be tried by fire. You're refined. You take whatever you Here's my life. I want to be tried by fire. Glorified. You take whatever you desire. Lord, here's my life. Your glory wants to come here. Let it fall. We want it all. Your fire is consumed. Fill this place, set it ablaze, and I'll be a living sacrifice for you. You're a fire, a finer. I want to be consumed. I want to be tried by fire. Glorified, you take whatever you Take whatever you desire. Come on. Lord, here, say it again. I want to be, I want to be tried by fire. Glory of fire. You take whatever you desire. Lord, here's my life. I want to be tried. I want to burn for you and only for you. So take my life as a sacrifice. Because I want to burn for you and only for you. So Cause I want to burn for you, yes, and only for you. Clean my hands, so clean my hands, purify my heart. I want to burn for you, and only for you. So take my life as a sacrifice. Take whatever you desire. Lord, here's my life. I want to be tried by fire. Glorified. You take whatever you
Ushers can come forward. All right, bow our heads one more time. Lord, we come to bring our offering and our tithes to you. We thank you that your word is true and it operates in our lives. We ask that you bless the offering. Bless those that give and those that have eaten their seed. Father God, uh, you said you'll give seed to the sower. We just ask for forgiveness. And then, Father, we ask for that seed that we may plant and reap a harvest. All bills be paid. All money that is due come in, Father God. Lost inheritances, lost uh, uh, what we thought was lost seed planted, Father God, that the harvest come forward. Father, we just thank you. We praise you. We give you all honor and all glory. And all God's people said, amen. amen. Turn to your neighbor and look him dead in the eye and say, you are so good looking. Turn to your other neighbor and say, you need to be around them a little bit more. Turn to the other neighbor and say, you need help. So, I'm going to give a testimony for her because she's not here and it's, but I really felt like I should share what the Lord has done. Now, you know, it's funny. The other day I was looking at my, con you know, in my contacts, you're Eva. I mean, you're Michelle because I've always known you as Michelle. But y'all, most of, most of y'all know her as Eva, but her name is really Michelle. Uh, <laughs> Eva's her name too, but Michelle is her name. Anyways, um, but, uh, you know, first of all, last week, um, Cello, I don't know if y'all saw on Facebook, Stella's car burned to a crisp. It was unbelievable. Um, but she is perfectly fine. Nothing happened to her. So that was a good praise report. But the best praise report of all was that um, you know, the Lord uh, gave a promise. Um, I'm calling you Michelle. I really feel like I'm supposed to. Like, I know she doesn't, but I'm telling you, most people, most people in this church know her as Eva, but her name is Michelle. Like, Lori, you know your real name, but you don't want to say it. I know. <laughs> he did it. I, he did it. I didn't do it. I, yeah, that's true. But it's okay. But there's an anointing on that your name is, as, as Michelle. So, um, but the Lord promised her um, that her health is going to be renewed. Um, and we have been believing, you know, especially because the promises of new beginnings for 2020, and um, uh, won't he do it? Amen. I'm going to talk a little bit about that this morning because uh, yesterday or the other day, the Lord reminded me. He said, what did I tell you in November? I said, won't he do it? And he will do it. Um, so anyways, her ultrasound on her liver came back, and it went from being a very sick liver to a healthy liver. Uh, and um, God is good. Won't he do it? So when God says I'm going to heal you, he means it. Now, delay is not denial. Amen. I was, I got so tickled last week as um, my husband was ministering. And, you know, the Lord says, even though the word may tarry, it will not be late. I'm like, well, that means it's tarrying. I'm like, that sounds so redundant. Even though the Lord will, I mean, the word will not tarry, but even as it tarries, wait on me. I'm like, okay, what is it? Is it tarrying or is it not tarrying? Um, it's tarrying to us, amen, but it's not to him because he's always right on time, amen. Um, one other thing I want to say is that I want to thank Mikey. Um, on Wednesday night, um, I, I can't even explain to you the, the spiritual impact that worship had over Brendan as you prayed and you sang and you prophesied over him. So I just want to thank you for your gift and, um, and praying over my son and prophesying over him and over me because I, I was pretty down Wednesday night. Um, but uh, God is good. And so uh, y'all know me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk from my heart. 
And we're going to talk about faith today because we all need it. Amen. I'm like, I think it's always so funny when God begins to like start talking to me about talking about stuff that we all know. I'm like, really? I'm talking to the church. I'm talking like it's like talking to y'all about salvation. Y'all should y'all should already know about salvation, right? Faith is a is is a is our life. It's supposed to be our life, but it's not always our life. Um, and it's hard sometimes to believe God, um, and it shouldn't be hard. So I just want to kind of talk about faith and some things that God has shown me this week, because you know what? I was on the altar this week, as we sang, and I was refined by fire, and I'm still being refined by fire. It's not over, but I know it's changing. Amen. I thought it was so funny how, um, you know, the Lord speaks in November, won't he do it? And he speaks in December about the the new era and the, the new manifestation of his presence that we are entering into. And I was so freaking excited. I had been, whoop, whoop, won't you do it? God's doing it. I'm all excited. And then hell hit. And I was like, wait a second. Wait a minute. Hold up now. And um, I had hit the brakes for just a second. You know what I mean? And uh, I found myself um, in the place where I wasn't speaking doubt, but I was being very cognizant of not saying certain things. Does that make sense? I did. I wasn't, and I wasn't necessarily like speaking out things in faith, but I was making sure I didn't say certain things. Um, because I knew if I did, I would trap myself and I would find myself in more of a fight than I already was in. And I really didn't want to go there either. Um, but, uh, the Lord really kind of spoke to my heart this week. And I, I, I just want to share with you from my own heart. And I'm hoping that it's, if it's just for me, y'all love me and y'all get to hear my message. Amen. But guess what? You'll need it too. God's not going to give me something and not have it minister to others. So let's go to Luke chapter seven. And then in a minute, we're going to have group participation. Yes, Ricky Neal Donaldson. And y'all are all scared. Y'all think immediately she's going to make us get up and prophesy or pray for somebody else. I'm not going to do that. You're just going to shout out the answer, okay? Not yet, but everybody's going to shout out the answer. And just to prepare you, as we go, the shouts will get less and less. But we're all going to participate. God's doing this morning, just to scare you already. Okay, so we're going to read out of the Passion Translation. So let's go to Luke chapter 7, verse 22. Y'all ready? All right, Holy Spirit, have your way. It says, one day Jesus said to his disciples, let's get in a boat and go across to the other side of the lake. That sounds like a good idea, doesn't it? Let's go over to the other side. It's a new decade, amen? Let's leave the old crap behind and let's go on to the other side of the lake. We're like, yes, Jesus, let's go. All right. Woo, we're going on the other side. Hallelujah. Dance a jig, get a hanky. Start prophesying, praying in tongues. Hallelujah, we're going to the other side. Not that messy. <laughs> okay. So they set sail and soon Jesus fell asleep. The wind rose and the fierce wind became a violent squall that threatened to swamp their boat. So the disciples woke Jesus up and said, Master, Master, we're sinking. Don't you care that we're going to drown? <laughs> they got way ahead of themselves, just saying, in that moment. So with great authority, what happened? chapter 8. Did I say 7? I'm sorry. Luke chapter 7. I mean chapter 8. Why am I thinking it's 7? It says 8. Biggest day right there. I'm going to start all over again. It's not, it's not Cody's fault. It's my fault. Blah, blah, blah. Look, I don't have an issue. I'm starting over. <laughs> so one day, Jesus said to his disciples, let's get in a boat and go across to the other side of the lake. So they set sail. And soon Jesus fell asleep, the wind rose, and the fierce wind became a violent squall that threatened to swamp their boat. So the disciples woke Jesus up and said, Master, Master, we're sinking. Don't you care that we're going to drown? And with great authority, Jesus rebuked the howling wind and surging waves, and instantly they stopped and became as smooth as glass. That's good water skiing right there. And then Jesus said to them, Why are you fearful? 
have you lost your faith in me? Shocked and shaken, they said with amazement to one another, who is this man who has authority over winds and waves that they obey him? on the other side. Hallelujah. (laughs) It's going to be the year of promise and manifestation of God's presence and glory. All the promises of God that are yes and amen. He prophesied is coming to us. Uh, And then all of a sudden, rut row, we have a storm. So first and foremost, the storm was not from God. It was from the enemy. How do we know? Because Jesus rebuked it. Jesus cannot rebuke a storm that comes from the Father. Amen. If he would have rebuked the storm, he would have been going against the will of the Father. We know Jesus never did anything and went against the will of the Father. So we already know that the purpose was to get to the other side of the lake, right? Jesus said, let's go to the other side. So he had a purpose. He had a plan. He had a destination. And on the way, a storm began to be stirred. And the storm got so bad. And it was so tremendous that these professional fishermen literally thought they were about to drown, that they were dying. You know how bad that storm had to be for professional fishermen to be like, "Uh uh-oh, this is it? This is the end? Like, and how long before they were alarmed till they woke up Jesus? Now, this message is not about Jesus sleeping, because I don't think it's an issue that Jesus went to sleep personally. He was a man in the flesh at that moment, and he needed rest. Amen? Amen. And, of course, we know that he was sleeping because he was at peace and rest with the Father, just like later on. Peter understood that same kind of restful peace, because when he was uh, on tap to have his head cut off the the next morning, he was asleep in prison. He was sleeping so hard, the angel had to kick him in the side and tell him to wake up. He was sleeping, even though there there was a big storm. So Peter learned his lesson later on in life. But Jesus is asleep, and they are fearful that they are going to drown. And I can tell you personally, I've experienced this many times, but this week especially, last Sunday when I left here, I felt like I started my process in drowning. I was absolutely overwhelmed by the storm that was in my life like that. Like, just like that. Like, didn't see it coming. Didn't have a clue. Like, holy guacamole, I'm about to die. That's exactly how I felt. I'm about It wasn't even my personal storm. It was my son's storm, but it was affecting me, and I was about to die. And I was so alarmed that I was, as I started to read this, I thought, because some versions say the disciples said we're going to die, but many, many, many versions say we're going to drown. And I kept looking at that word drown, so I looked it up. So I'm going to give you some definitions, all right? Because I'm all about the words, what they mean. Okay, so to drown means to suffocate by submersion. Okay, pretty pretty um, uh, obvious. Now, of course, we're talking about submersion by water, but you can drown by submersion in the way that you feel. When fear overwhelms you, you can drown because you're 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 being submerged underneath the weight of fear. You can be drowning in unforgiveness. You can be drowning in so many things, self-pity and pride and all of these things that can come and they can overwhelm us that we feel like we are suffocating and that we're dying. It means to overwhelm, to cover up completely, and to be overcome by a superior force. Now, remember, this storm was the enemy. This was not of God. And I know that we're believers, and I understand that we all understand that we have an enemy who roars about like roaring lion. But let me tell you what. The power, the enemy has no authority, but he has power. And that power can be extremely overwhelming to you and I. And if we don't think that we can't feel the effects of the enemy, we are so stupid. We're, we're supposed to understand the strategy of the enemy. We're supposed to understand his schemes. And when we feel like we are drowning and we are being overpowered by anything that is other than God, we need to understand that there is an enemy swirling around us and we need to be on notice. Now, oftentimes, though, it's not until we are literally not being able to breathe that we get a clue. Now, I literally 
was having moments where I could not physically breathe. I felt like I was being, like a boa constrictor was being wrapped around my chest. I couldn't take a breath in. And I was like, I'm having a panic attack. That's what's happening. I'm having a panic attack. And I'd be sitting in my chair, no, no one else around me. I couldn't breathe. My blood pressure would go sky high. And I felt like I was suffocating. This was an attack of the enemy. Now, I'm talking about my personal life, but I've had this many times in my life, but now I'm getting a clue. So when we feel like we're being overwhelmed by something that is not the Spirit of God, and, what, and we know that the Spirit of God has very distinct attributes, right? We know that His Spirit is good. We know that He's kind. We know that He is loving. We know that he's, He is all-powerful. We know that He is peace, that He is comfort, that He's patience. We know the mark of the Spirit of God. So when we are drowning in anything other than what we know is him, we need to understand that we are fighting something spiritual. And the enemy does not want you to engage with the Spirit of God by faith because he knows then that's his demise. Then that means the weapons that he's using that are prospering against you will have to stop because you're entering into a new spirit, a spirit that can overwhelm the spirit that's overwhelming you, right? Amen? So I looked at some of the synonyms for drowning and overwhelming, and it, and it means to crush or to devastate, to grind down. Oh, that's a bad definition. I don't like that. To oppress, to overpower, to, um, to prostrate, to knock your butt down flat. But as I dug a little deeper, there is uh, one particular place that actually had the same definition for drown and overwhelm, and it was this, and I found this so powerful. It means to cover completely or to make imperceptible. I want you to think about that. When you're overwhelmed or when you feel like you're drowning, something has covered completely has now made you and I, we now have, we have no perception any longer of God. It's now imperceptible. Now, when you look up imperceptible, I want you to hear these things. It, to, imperceptible actually means it's impossible to perceive things by your mind, by your heart, by your spirit, okay? So that means it becomes inaudible. It becomes incognizable, so it's beyond your understanding. It becomes indiscernible, insensible, invisible, undetectable, unhearable, unobservable. When the enemy comes in like a flood, what he's trying to do is overwhelm us so that we cannot hear, we cannot see, we cannot understand, we cannot discern, we cannot figure out, we cannot see. Everything becomes imperceptible. Everything we know about God begins to fade away, and all of our heightened senses of what we know is going on begins to take center place in our life. And so I feel panic, I feel fear, I feel like I'm drowning. I feel like I can't breathe. I feel like it's the end. I feel like I have no victory. I feel like I'm losing my freaking mind. I feel like I've lost. I feel like I missed it. I feel like he lied to me. All of the things of God become imperceptible to me because I no longer can see because in the midst there's covering completely is this whirlwind where God is on the other side and I am here and this squall is so thick, I can no longer see him. And that is the plan and the purpose of the enemy. That's what he wants the storm to do. And he wants you to give up. Oh. When I began to think about not being able to hear God, not being able to see God, not being able to discern God, not to be able to hear truth or not be able to understand what, all those things. The Lord, when I was uh, first saved, the Lord uh, spoke to me out of Isaiah 43. Let's go there next. When I 
was first saved, and I just, I just, uh, I was filled with the Holy Spirit, and the Lord had given me um, uh, Isaiah, I mean, uh, Romans chapter 8, and that's when I realized I was no longer in bondage to the spirit of fear, but I received the spirit of adoption by which I cry, Abba, Father. And I knew that fear no longer had a hold on me. And then I was going through some things, and the Lord spoke very clearly this, this verse to me. In, in verse 10, he says, You are my witnesses, says the Lord, and my servant who I have chosen, that you may know me, believe me, remain steadfast to me, and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. I, even I, am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. And this is really powerful scripture you can keep on reading. Matter of fact, he, he begins to say um, that he's existed from the first, and there's nothing that you and I are going through that he has not already delivered us out of. Amen. My point to that is, the Lord began to speak to me. He said, Annette, what did, I, what did I tell you when you were first born again? And I immediately knew. I said, you told me that I was made to know you, to understand you, and to believe you. Now, that's a, a very simple thing. But let me tell you what. It began to shake. some. It began to put, put, put holes in the storm. And I kept saying, I have been made to know God, to know him intimately. To have my inner courses and my my deep longings to be with him and his deep, and we become one together. He chose me, he chose you, he chose me to know him. So that I never have to wonder what's going on. I know him. And then he's chosen me to understand him. I'm supposed to know what I'm going through and understand what I'm going through. I'm supposed to know the end from the beginning because I'm with him. And then I'm supposed to believe him. Very simple. I know him. I understand him. I believe him. And I sat in my chair. I said, I don't know you right now. I don't understand you right now. And I don't believe you right now. He said, exactly. That's the storm in your way. I become imperceptible to you. You need to get back in with me so that you can see me, you can know me, and you can understand me. And I was like, okay. So it just starts poking holes. So I was sitting there, and he said, okay. If you know the storm is demonic, then what's the first thing Jesus did? He got up, he rebuked the storm, right? Because the storm was not the disciples' issue. And it's like he was telling me, Annette, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's the, the financial need you have is not the issue. The health problem you have is not the issue. My son's disorder is not the issue. None of those things are the issue. Women, we feel fat. That must be the issue. Nope, not the issue. The issue <laughs> is us and our fear and our faith. Jesus handled the storm. Look, he can speak to anything and handle it. Not a, not a big problem. He can look at you and just say, be healed, and you're healed. He can look at your bank account and say, be full, and it be full. That's just the kind of God we serve. He can, he can, be, he can look over Brennan and say, be free. And he would miraculously and totally be set free, never have to have medicine again the rest of his life. He could heal my back like that. I'd never have to have medicine again the rest of my life. He's that powerful. He can do it. I don't doubt that he can do it. I know he can do it. He set me free. He delivered me from alcoholism. He delivered me from suicide. I know what he's able, uh, he's able and capable of doing. But he doesn't always do it like that. Because we have a refining fire. We have something he's trying to build inside of you and I and the purpose is so that we will know him that we will understand him and that we will believe him Peter freaking out in the squall here later on in Acts not freaking out what happened he learned some things along the way amen and you and I need to learn some things along the way so it was appropriate that all this crap happened in January after I just prophesied my butt off for months for months I've been prophesying and I should not be shocked that the word of God was challenged by the enemy. But we are going to the other side of the lake. Amen. And I will not be stopped. I will not be moved. Amen. We're going through. We're going through. We're going through. We're going through. We don't stop. Okay, sorry. That's an old thing. All right, so. That's old time. That's old timey stuff. So, he healed. I mean, he responded to the storm. But he questioned the disciples. Here we have a template. He deals with the storm. He questions the disciples. 
why are you so fearful? And have you lost your faith? Oh, it was like Jesus in my living room, walking up to my chair. He's like, why are you so fearful? What has happened to your faith in me? What is faith? Faith is complete confidence. It is having every necessary part perfect and freedom from all doubt, assuredness. Faith is complete, perfect confidence and assuredness. Is this a cup? Is this a cup? Are you sure? I want you to say, yes, I'm sure. Is this cup purple? Are you sure? Do you spell purple? P-U-R-P-L-E? Are you sure? Is this cup a Yeti? If I tell you the bottom, or I see right here, it says Yeti. Now, are you sure? Some of y'all are like, I was in the plant when they made it. Is this filled with tea? Is this filled with tea? Did you see me pour it? Yes, you did. You were standing right there in the kitchen, ironing your pants. Did you see me make the tea? Is the tea sweetened? Are you sure? Did I use Lipton tea bags? Are you sure? Is this three quarters full? You're not sure, are you? That's faith. <laughs> Some of y'all can look at this. You know it's a Yeti. You know it's a large cup. You know it's purple. Y'all know that. Some of you who know me really well know it's 99% chance it's tea. Could be lemonade. Some of y'all know I drink lemonade tea, mostly tea. If you really know me, you know I think regular tea is a sin. It's not unsweet tea. Tea is unsweet by itself. Don't call it unsweet. It's tea. And I don't think tea is good without no sweetener. So, yes, it's got sugar in it. I don't use no fake stuff. It's sweet tea. When you really know me, you know I like my tea sweet. If you were in my living room or in my kitchen with me, you would have seen me made the tea. You would have known how much sugar I put in it. <laughs> Clayton knows how much. He's quoting out how many cups of sugar you're supposed to put in the tea. I don't make it any other way. My tea is better than bushes. I'm just saying. My point is, there are certain things that you know by looking at this cup. There are also certain things you know because you know me. But there are some things you don't know because you weren't with me this morning in the kitchen. Neither were you with me when I made the tea. And there is the problem with faith. Or there's the answer to faith. If this is God, which purple and tea are pretty close to it, amen? The roadhouse rolls, Jesus. It's like a heavenly experience, God. We had roadhouse rolls the other night. They were so hot, we couldn't even, we couldn't even touch them. It, oh, and they were so buttery, and it was dripping down your, your arm. And I was just like, this is just a holy moment. Like, it's just, <laughs> Jesus, mighty God. So good. So it was. I was like, Shandai, yes, 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 yes. Give me a Hyundai, amen. So, uh. But the more you're with me and the longer you're with me, the more you know. And faith is no different. The more we're with Jesus, the more time we spend with him, the more we get up all on his grill. It's like those irritating dogs that will not let you be. You know what I mean? Like, you know, the dog, you're like, go away, go away, and they won't go away. They're just like all up in your face all the time. That's how we're supposed to be with Jesus, all up in his grill, all the time. What are you doing? How are you doing it? What are you doing? Where are we going? 
Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we going? Huh? Huh? What are you saying now? What are you saying now? Because he's speaking all the time. What are you saying? Where are we going? What are we doing? And so when something happens, like if I'm, if I know Jesus, then I know if I pick up this cup, I know that it's going to be cold because I know him and I know his, he's insulating. I know what's in there is something I desire. I know I'm going to have whatever I need to make what it is that I need to be in the cup. I, he, by being close to him and being intimate with him, I always know that by faith I can trust him because I have experience with him. And as soon as we remove ourselves from Jesus, and it, look, I understand we're like, I just want to take a flesh break for just the day. Hallelujah. No, we can't. We can't. Because as soon as we sever ourselves from the source, what happens? It becomes inaudible, indiscernible. All the things become imperceptible because we just spend one. If you don't think the enemy's quick, he's quick. He's so fast to put a blinder up. That's why you've got to constantly be in fellowship with Jesus. And I understand when you hurt, the last thing you want to do is read your Bible. I get it. I get it. But we have to, because in the midst of this, we find out what the storm is and how do I overcome the storm and why am I in the storm? And then why am I operating in fear instead of faith? Because this question is, why are you so fearful? You're fearful because you don't have the faith in him because you can't see him. And beloved faith is being able to serve him and know him whether you see him or not. So that means I have to know this word and see this word in spite of sickness. And we, you know, I, I was even saying Wednesday night, like if, if I'm sick, I'm immediately going to go find uh, Debbie Stevens. Deb, De, Debbie Stevens, she's not going to let me say I don't feel good. She will punch me in my face. She will not let me say I don't feel good. She'll say, uh-uh, no, 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 no. God said you are healed, girl. And she will just prophesy over me and she will pray over me and she will... Lay hands suddenly on me, and she will get a hold of me. And by the time she's done, I don't dare say I don't feel good around her because she scares me. She's like volatile with her and violent with her faith, especially when it comes to sickness. She, ain't, she don't play, and don't ever tell John you're broke. No, 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 no. He, he has an anointing for money, and he will lay it on you. And I'm like, well, it's because she has... Why? Because she has a knowing about healing that I don't know. And I need her when I don't feel good. I need her to be violent. We all talked about Vivian this morning. We know Vivian, she, ha Vivian, she, don't, she has faith. We just know Vivian is a faith warrior. She's going to believe God no matter what. And we want to be around people like that. But, beloved, you and I are supposed to be those people. We're supposed to be the ones who stand in the middle of the boat in the storm and say, I don't know what's going on, but Jesus, what did you tell me to do? What does your word say? I know you want me to know you, understand you, and believe you. So tell me what I'm supposed to say. Tell me what I'm supposed to do. I say constantly, y'all know my mottos, y'all know my things. But I'm like, if you tell me you're in a fight, I'm going to tell you, what's your word? What's your scripture? And don't give me no one that you know. Like if you're sick, you're like, I am the Lord that healeth thee. Don't give me that. Don't even give me that because you lie. That's not your word. That's not your rhema. What does God tell you to say over your situation? What is God saying to you? And the other day when I was like, Jesus, he said, what did I tell you in November? I said, you said, won't, won't he do it? He said, well, am I a liar? No. So I just started saying on Thursday, won't he do it? Won't he do it? I don't know how he's going to do it, but won't he do it? Won't he do it? He's going to heal. He's going to set free. He's going to deliver. Won't he do it? In the midst of me still freaking out a little bit and having panic attacks, it doesn't matter. In the midst of it, I just kept saying, won't he do it? Won't he do it? You said you would do it. You said you are not a man that you could lie. When you spoke a word, you said you would bring it to pass. It will not tarry. It will be right on time. Won't you do it? Won't you do it? I felt like a crazy person, but I kept saying it until I started to feel something happening to my storm. It slowly began to dissipate. It slowly began to lose its strength. It was no longer able to choke me any longer. 
And I found myself seeing with grace, and I found myself seeing with mercy and understanding again. Why are you so fearful? Have you lost your faith in me? The answer to that question on Thursday is yes, I have lost my faith in you. But you know what Jesus says to us when we say that to him? I've not lost my faith in you. I still believe in you. I still believe that you can get a hold of me and do what you're called to do and say what you're called to say. Have complete confidence in me. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 11. I like it in the passion. He says, now faith brings our hopes into reality and becomes the foundation needed to acquire the things we long for. Let's do that slow. Remember, he said, have you lost your faith in me? So remember, faith, we're talking about Faith is the complete confidence that we need in Christ for us to be sure that we can say, if he says, am I going to deliver you? Whether you're delivered yet or not, you can say, yes, you are my deliverer. I am sure. I am sure, just like you are sure this is purple. With confidence, all of you said, yes, I am sure that's purple. That same kind of confidence when you're in the midst of something and he says, am I going to deliver you? When you can say, yes, Lord, you will deliver me, I am sure. That is where you have to be before you're delivered. Did you hear me? Just like I said, is this purple? Everybody said, yes, I am sure. And you said it with confidence. If you need deliverance, let's just say, and Jesus says to you, I will deliver you until you can respond and say, you are my deliverer and you are delivering me and I am sure of it. Until you can say that before your deliverance, it's not faith. Faith is complete confidence and assurance that what God has said he will do, he will do before he has done it. Because look how it says, faith brings our hopes into reality. I know you will deliver me. I know you will deliver. I am sure you're going to deliver me. I am sure you're going to deliver me. I am sure you're going to deliver me. And until... As, as I say that, as I stay in assuredness and I stay in complete confidence of that, and conti- no matter what comes at me, I say, Lord, you said you would deliver me and you are going to deliver me and I am delivered. The blood of Jesus has already done it. I am sure you're my deliverer. I am sure you're my deliverer. At some moment, my faith in being sure brings into the reality the very thing that I'm saying. Does that make sense? So he says, faith brings out our hopes into reality. So my hope, look, with my son, my hope is that he is completely set free and delivered and healed. Filled with the spirit and burning and truth. And I'm going to pray and believe. But until I am sure God's going to do it, it's not faith. So I have to continue striving to Christ and continue speaking the word of God and seeking God's faith until something happens and faith is deposited in me and all of a sudden I am confident. Look, all of you, if, you are, if, you, if I tell you where are you going when you die, you're going to tell me you're going to heaven. If you're born again, you've never seen heaven. None of y'all have walked in heaven yet. 
y'all are in heavenly places. Don't get me wrong. I understand the truth. But none of y'all can come back and report to me what heaven looks like. But you are sure you're going. How are you sure? <laughs> Did Jesus die and rise again on the third day? How do how you know that? You're sure, but you know why you're sure? Because his spirit bore witness with your spirit is what Romans tells us. He says the reason that you know 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 that you know, that's assurance, that's complete confidence that you know that you know that you know that you know, you know that because his spirit bore witness with your spirit. And when his spirit bore witness with your spirit, all of a sudden you're like, I'm going to heaven. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He is Lord. He was he was. He was resurrected on the third day. He sits at the right hand of the Father. He's constantly making intercession for me. There are some things you have no doubt about. Why? Because the Spirit of God deposited a witness with your spirit, and that witness is the assurance of your salvation. And there is no difference between that assurance and the assurance of whether or not you're going to make it financially, if your marriage is going to survive the attack that it's under, if your healing is going to come. None of those things are different than that very thing. Are you going to heaven? There's no difference. Are you sure? <laughs> Sometimes, like, my mom will something going on with her phone or her iPad. Y'all know me and when it comes to having to help people with tech. I love technology and I'm very good at it. But my mom's not as savvy with tech as I am. But praise God, my mom is trying with all her heart to be high tech and I love it. She's got her apps, she's got her stuff, she's got her stuff going on. But when something goes wrong with her phone, she calls me. And I'll say, Mom, does it have this on there? She'll say, nah. I'm like, are you sure? No. <laughs> every, every single time. Does it? No. Are you sure? No. And then she'll look and she'll go, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like her immediate response is, nope. But as I dig deeper, she's like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I see the number one there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're the same way with God. We're the same way. We're the same way. And he's like, are you sure? You're like, uh, no, uh-uh. <laughs> But a lot of times when we're saying something, we're like, you're my healer. He's like, are you sure? You're like, no. I know you're their healer, but I don't know if you're my healer. Look, you got, you got to know he's your healer when you're sick. <laughs> it's no good for, I need to know he's my healer. I, I love that he's your healer. And I can pray and believe for you, but when I'm sick, I need him to be my healer. And so... Faith brings out into reality our hope. And then what? It becomes the foundation needed to acquire the things that we long for. What are you longing for? It is the evidence required to prove what is still unseen. That seems so backwards. Faith is the evidence required. Faith is evidence to prove what's still on. Does anybody else think that's backwards and kind of retarded? Amen. That means what you don't see is actually the evidence that you have faith. That's so stupid. But that's the truth. That's what it is. He's like, look, the fact that you don't see it and you have to be sure of it right now is the very faith. That's exactly what you need to let you know that you're in faith. Amen. Like, uh, I'd rather have it. Well, you'll get it. But until you're sure, you ain't going to get nothing. And the fact that you aren't sure, until you're sure, and as soon as you're sure and you don't see it, guess what? It doesn't matter anymore. Because when you're sure, you're like, I don't see it, but I sure do see it. I see it like I see, I see it. I, see. I always tell people, when I had, because prophetically, I don't, I don't like see, like if I'm praying and I, and I say, I, see, I don't see a picture. I see here. I can't describe it. Don't know. I have a knowing. It's like all of us, I, I may know there's a fire. I may know there's a plant. I may know, there, I, I don't see it, but I see it. And when I see it down here, I know it. And even though I may be shaky, I, even like in prayer, I'll be like, I'm in prayer, and, and I, this is what I see. Now, 
if I was in my right mind, I'd be like, I didn't see nothing, and I'm talking out my rear end. But by faith, I know I saw it here, and so I speak it. Last Sunday, can I, last Sunday I talked about the reins of love. And I said, I, I don't see R-A-I-N-S. I saw 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 I apparently channeling little Asian people. Um, <laughs> but I said, I see the reins of love. And so, and I even said before I said it, I keep seeing it, and I was kind of battling, is it me, is it blah, blah, you know, and so I finally just, bleh, I said it because I kept seeing it down here. And then Michelle texted me, and she's like, that word was for me. Now, I never would have known that, for one, if she wouldn't have told me, but she never would have received it if I wouldn't have had faith to, see, to know that what I was knowing was God. It's the same thing in everything in our life. So not seeing it fulfilled yet and being sure of it is the place that you know that you're about to have your breakthrough. Abraham walking around saying, hey, my name's Abraham. <laughs> hey, I'm Abraham. For years. Yo, yo, hey, I'm, I'm Abraham. <laughs> What was he saying? I'm the father of many nations. They're like, you ain't got one kid. I'm the father of many nations. <laughs> I got some potent seed. Yes, I do. And they're like, yeah, whatever. You know what I mean? Like, but he kept saying it for years. I'm, I'm the father of many nations. I'm the father of many nations. They're like, you ain't got one nation. And then the one nation you did have, hello, look at them today. Hello, amen. But the promise came. How sure do you have to be to change your name? So faith brings our hopes into reality and becomes the foundation needed to acquire the things that we long for. It is all the evidence required to prove what is still unseen. So if the storm that we are in causes us to lose confidence in Jesus then it's going to produce the fear and the effect of drowning. But if the storm that we are in begins to bring us into complete confidence, it will actually produce the power and the desire that we need. This is not about feeling small or about feeling weak. It's about growing intimately in our relationship with Jesus so that when storms do come, and Jesus said, Storms will come. He didn't say if a storm. He said when a storm comes. You and I are not exempt from storms because the enemy, he, look, he has, he has power. I told you, he has power, and he's going to cause things to be stirred up. But the issue is, what are we going to do before the, st- the storm comes? My husband said one time years ago, he was preaching in youth, and he said, you cannot wait so you hear the tornado sirens to start building your shelter. If you live on the coast and you know there's hurricanes, you can't wait till a hurricane warning is finally in effect for you to go, you know, decide to get some storm windows. That's dumb. Especially if you know you live in Tornado Alley. We all have a tornado plan around here, right? I mean, y'all should, but I mean, we all do. We know. I always said I hope there's never a tornado at 11 o'clock on a Saturday morning in Bell County. Because we all know, we all like, oh, it's 11 o'clock. There goes the, you know, the sound check. Nope, nope, nope. It's actually a tornado. That would be horrible. Uh, but you can't wait till the storm comes to build a shelter. And that's the same thing with our faith. So you may not be in a storm right now. Praise God. I'm so happy for you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But you shouldn't be like resting on your, putting your feet up. Like, whoo, I ain't got no storm. I'm glad it's all her life. <laughs> Things are rosy in my neck of the woods. There should be some preparation because guess what? There's a storm that will come eventually. And what you do now beforehand matters. So you are my chosen people to know me, to understand me, and to believe me. Why are you so afraid? Have you lost your complete confidence in me? So, your honey bun. 
I just want to. Mm, that is so good. I'm so thirsty. If you have been in a storm, seriously, not to make a joke about it, <laughs> but if you have been in a storm and you felt like your confidence is waning and you've been feeling like, you know what, I'm really not sure, you know, one of the best things we can do is link up our faith together. I, I leaned so heavily, you know, this week on Christina and Nona and, uh, and, for, for, and Ren and just for for prayer, there was, you know, I'm just like, I just, and I was bluntly honest every time. I'm like, this is what I'm going through. This is what I'm feeling. I, I need prayer. And because we can't do it alone. We can't do, we cannot do this alone. We need each other. We need the strength of one another. We need the faith of one another. You know, when you're feeling low, you need somebody to come up alongside of you and lift your hands and to pray with you and let, and let their faith stir you back to a place of faith yourself. And so I, I want to do that for you this morning if you have been struggling um, in the area of your assuredness in Christ, that you don't, you don't know for sure that he's going to do it for you. You know, people were telling me yesterday that they have been battling and that they are struggling. And you know what? We all struggle. But let's not struggle alone. The best thing we could do is get together and join our faith together. And so I want to pray with you this morning, and I want to anoint you this morning if you're struggling because I'm going to link my faith with your faith, and we're going to get over this, and we're going to see the storm settle. And guess what? We are getting to the other side. We are going to accomplish, and we're going to receive the deliverance and the promises of God. What he has prophesied over us has not changed because of one storm. It hasn't changed because of one hiccup, one hill, one valley, one mountain. It does not matter. What he said was coming to pass is coming to pass. And we will stand and we will scream and declare, won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Until we are blue in the face and we see the hope and the reality of Jesus come into manifestation. Amen? Amen. Oh, stand up. Thank you, Lord. Josh, can you move that? Thank you, sir. Amen. Rebecca, I kept seeing your initials RS, and um, then I saw righteousness, an R, and an S, and so everything, you know, everything in between the beginning and the end, God is equipping you with a righteous standard for you to make a line in the sand to make a declaration and you will not be moved. And the Lord said, no matter what you keep declaring and you keep standing for righteousness because there is a, there is a flag that you already raised yourself, but there is a flag actually over the flag you raised. Like you said, you're like, this is it. This is my stake. But there is even over above that, the banner of God is over your life and you're going to see the effects of the righteousness that you have been standing in and standing on it's yours. Don't quit standing. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Won't he do it? Yes. Baby Bree is home. Yes. She's healthy. Won't he do it? Yes. Amen. Come on, Come on. Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we love you. We thank you. We're so thankful that even with weakness and in frailty and even in doubt and unbelief, your love for us is just astounding. And you never quit on us. You never lose faith in us. You're constantly stirring us up to draw near to you so that you can encourage us and comfort us and give us peace and give us hope once again. Father, I thank you that you are raising us to be a people who know you, understand you, and believe you. We will not be moved. We will not be swayed by the winds of this world, but we will stand true in faith and on your word, knowing that you're faithful and that you are true, that you always complete the work that you start. And so, Holy Spirit, this morning, 
if there's any in this house that would, would need to have an inoculation of faith this morning, that just need to have a touch from you this morning, uh, a grace this morning for them to carry on in the fight and in the warfare, I just ask that you stir their hearts now. And as we pray and agree over them and we touch them, that you would anoint them with your fire and with your presence and that you would give them eyes to see and ears to hear and to know that they know that they know that you are in this with them and that you have not left them and you have not abandoned them. You are a good father. You are a good, good, good father. And Father, we choose to see you. So I ask that you'd remove the storms in our lives so that we can be able to once again see who you are and that you will become perceivable once again to us. In Jesus' name, amen. If you want prayer this morning, there's someone to touch and agree with you, I want you to come on. Y'all don't have to, you know wonder is it me is it me if you even questioned if it was you come on we have amazing anointed y'all come closer this way anointed people here that will pray and touch and agree with you you shouldn't leave don't leave the same way you came in if you need a touch from god amen thank you jesus
Father, your word.
word says that by his stripes we are healed. Father, Lorenda has been fighting this sickness for a week. It's one thing after another. Father, we just say no more in Jesus' name. We draw the line and we speak the blood over her. We pronounce her whole. Father, I ask for the wind of the Holy Spirit to blow into that room right now and fill her with vitality. Yes. Fill her, Father God, with energy. Yes. All that is viral or bacterial, Father God, be consumed by the fire of the Holy Ghost. And we ask, Father God, for the life blood to flow through her father god the holy spirit to touch her and make her whole and strengthen her father god yes. in all areas that she knows that she has to correct and change father god we just say that uh, right now she has the the willpower the the courage and the ability to complete father god and we stand in the gap and pray father god as she marches forward and we just say whole and heal refreshed and renewed and father what years have been stolen we call it back now in jesus name this father i just ask for a financial blessing on that household right now father i ask father god that you would bless them above and beyond the number that i felt in my heart and father i just say Thank you. I say thank you for doing what I just asked you to do. And Father, I thank you for the gift that James Lorenda, his head of the household, but that whole household, yes. the support they are to this ministry. someone, hug them real tight, squeeze them real tight, tell them you love them, tell them you're glad they are, uh, I got to see you today, and uh, tell them that if they'll come Wednesday, they'll get to see you again, and if they really want to see you a lot, come next Sunday, bring a friend, bring an enemy, bring somebody, step on the side of the road, go get your in-laws, go get all the family members out of the deer stands. Go to the jailhouse, break somebody out. Father, we love you and 